Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kelly Mulhern from Functional Wellness Docs, and today I'm going to take five or ten minutes and just show you how quick and easy it is to use the Functional Wellness uh, Blood Work Analysis Cheat Sheet. Uh, we'll just call it the Cheat Sheet for short. And the very first thing you want to do once you've opened it up and have it on your computer is you want to do a File Save As. Uh, file save as and that way you do not overwrite something on your master template and when you do this you want to make sure to use some kind of naming convention that makes sense for you in your practice it might be uh, first name last name first initial last name uh, something along those lines uh, I'm not going to do the file save as because for HIPAA purposes I'm while I'm using real patient data I am not going to enter in the name or save it uh, the next thing you'll do is enter in the patient name. So you can see when you click on that box, it's protected. You get this alert and that's all good. No problem. Just click on OK. And we're going to unprotect the sheet. So you go to format and then click on that box and you're going to come on down to where it says unprotect sheet. And now you'll be able to enter in the patient name and date of birth. Once that's done, I typically put the date uh, in each panel which you don't have to do, but that's what I do. Uh, we're gonna skip that for now. And then you just, you start entering all your, your results. And so you'll notice that some of the analytes have a male and a female range. Uh, so this is a female patient. So we are skipping the boxes that correspond to uh, values for men. And you can enter this yourself. You can easily train a staff member to enter it in for you. Uh, and probably the fastest way is to have somebody read through the numbers while another person is entering them. Uh, but either way, it's still pretty fast. And you'll see that as the uh, values are being entered, the functional range is already pre-programmed in there. And we have a uh, field that pops up and lets us know, is this specific test result within optimal range? Is it high looked at from a functional range or is it low? Uh, and so you'll just scroll on through. Now I did try to arrange the layout in terms of what is uh, a common a common format for the test results to be reported back to us from the labs. Uh, but every now and then <laughs> I come across a lab that reports things kind of different. Uh, so if that happens to be a lab you use frequently, then you can feel free uh, to go ahead and modify this. That's why I kept it in Excel because most people are so comfortable and familiar with Excel. Uh, so you can uh, take things out. For example, if there are lab tests that you rarely perform that are in here taking up space, you can take them out. If there are things that you often perform but are not listed, you can add them in. And as with anything, not everybody agrees 100% on all of the functional reference ranges or functional, um, the functional ranges for the blood work. If that's the case, if there's a number that you prefer, then all you have to do is change it. Uh, and in a different video, I've given directions and instruction on how to go about changing that. Uh, I promise, I know this looks a little bit complex when you first dive in, um, but it's actually pretty darn straightforward. Uh, so that is something that you can easily change. Um, another thing I'll mention as the values are being entered, uh, the very first thing that shows up as you saw was the uh, CBC with differential. Then we move into the uh, CMP, complete metabolic panel, and then we have different panels after that. And as you use this once or twice, you're going to figure out where things are um, pretty, pretty quickly. Now I will mention that as you're going through, there's a couple of things that I like to do um, and I have my staff instructed to do to make this even easier. When uh, a test result gives us a high or low, then I like to take uh, and I have them instructed to go ahead and highlight the corresponding box for the common explanations for highs and lows. Um, so they can do that as they go or they can kind of get all the numbers entered in and then do that. Uh, and then the other thing that I like to do is if a test was not done, um, I typically will gray out that box. And that way I know five months from now, a year from now, that that test was not performed. It wasn't a clerical error. It wasn't um, some kind of a mistake on our end that we forgot to enter it in. We just know that it wasn't done, um, wasn't ordered, wasn't performed. Okay, and so with that being said, we now have 
all of our things entered in. And we're going to go through and just real quickly look at those reds and we're going to highlight the corresponding boxes. Um, so we can see for the RBC, that's high, so we're going to select the box that says high and then we're going to go over and we're going to do the little drop down to color in that box. Pick your favorite color. There you go. And so we won't go through all of them, but you can see how easy this is um, to just go ahead on and um, highlight the areas of highs and lows. Now, at this point, you want to make sure to save it again once you've got all your things highlighted and uh, all the other boxes grayed out. And then you can choose to print this for your patient, use it internally. I personally print it for my patients. Um, now I have it configured to where it prints nicely on 10 pages uh, when the page breaks are in perfect positions for me, but everybody's printer is configured differently and there is no way possible <laughs> for me to configure this so it works on everybody's printer perfectly. Um, so you may have to do a little bit of tweaking to get the page uh, page formatting correct um, to print out and look nice for what you like. Now I do choose to print um, all 10 pages. The first 10 page, uh, first five pages are going to be the analytes the, and the results. The final five pages will be the common explanations. Um, now some offices only print the results. Some offices print the results plus the common explanations. Um, just as is, and then other offices will print the results and then the explanations, but only the explanations that have been highlighted. Uh, so it's up to you what makes the most sense for you in your practice. I personally print all 10 pages uh, because I found over the years that it increases compliance and comprehension. Uh, patients are interested and engaged and uh, they're curious to learn more about different things and they get excited about when are they going to do their next set of labs instead of dreading it. Um, and speaking of dread, the reason why I did this was because I used to, and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but I used to absolutely dread when a patient would hand me a copy of their labs because I knew that it was going to take me a big chunk of time to sit down and analyze it through the functional range. There just wasn't an easy format for that. Um, and so the first several iterations, I laugh now, but as I was starting to flesh this out, I would actually print it and then handwrite everything in and you know, take a, a highlighter, like an actual highlighter to highlight the piece of paper. Uh, it was pretty comical. Uh, but now I have it to the point where it's all streamlined and it's automated. And I really hope that you find it as helpful as I do and that it saves you as much time in your practice as it saves me. So I hope, I hope this video was useful for you and I hope that uh, you find this tool um, to be very effective in your practice. So thank you for all that you do to support your communities and uh, thank you for paying attention.